Okay, I'm going to try to get into my message. I might not be able to finish it today, but um, let's just stand as we go into a word of prayer. Because um, as you should have recognized by now, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save everybody. I cannot do it. It is God who does it. Amen. So we got to, uh, got to make sure everything we do is based on His grace and His mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bow before you, God. We thank you, Lord, for this awesome benefit, privilege, this gift that we have, whereby we could come to your throne of grace and find help in time of need. People who were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel without God, without hope, lost, destined to destruction. But Lord, you reached down through the cross of Jesus Christ and you gave us a chance to come into your presence. Father, and as we stand before you, we thank you, Lord. We ask for your cleansing, for your washing. Lord, forgive us for the things that we have done. And forgive us for the things that we should have done and did not do, God. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit, oh God, even now, you will remove the distractions, oh God. Anything that we try to, 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 to take away from what you're, you're intending to do, God. We pray that you will bring it under subjection, oh God. And let your will, God, be done, Lord. Father, I pray that your word will go forth in clarity, O God, with clarity, O God. I pray that you will break up our hearts, O God, our fallow ground, O God, that it will, the seed will find good soil where it could bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold. Father, we thank you for what you are doing and what you will continue to do as we com- continue to submit and surrender our lives to you. Father, give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, after Brother Della came, sorry for using him because that's a vessel that God used to speak to us. Amen. There's nothing about him. He also, for your information, he also is a nobody. Amen. So don't put him on a pedestal, okay? Don't lift him up. He's a nobody. We are nobody in ourselves. But through Christ, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Right. In Christ. Right. But in ourselves, we are always will be nobody. Don't care how many years you've been with the Lord. You're never going to a somebody. Only as you submit to God, then the God in you is seen. Amen? If the Spirit of God were to leave you after a hundred years of walking with Him, you will be undone and wretched. Just like that. Because it's not in us. Amen? To be righteous. The righteousness that we have is filthy rags. But it is about God. Amen? So after Brother Della came and he spoke, a lot of us had a chance to examine ourselves. You see, it was nothing new. But something God needs to remind us. Some of it was new, mind you, remind, mind you. Some of it was new. Amen? I was open to us. It was always there, but just not seen in, in the light that we saw it. Amen? So I, I felt led to examine myself and make sure that the first works, the foundational works were in place, were done correctly. Because if you know anything about building a structure, if the foundation is messed up, you're going to be in trouble. Amen? If the foundation is not sure, then it will fail. Amen? So we got to make sure that we are founded on the sure foundation. So my question today is, is your foundation rock? Or sand. You remember Sandy? The starting last it passed through? And I think it was, a, you know, the, in the, on the eastern seaboard in the States, you know, those people had the extra money and could make that, like, get that binding line and have that nice, shift, shift, shift ones, manners or what you want to call them. And the sand, you see what Sandy did with them, right? Okay. That was building on the sand. When the flood come, it's going to take it away. Amen? Let's turn to um, Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to read the same story from two, from two books, from Matthew and from Luke. The word of a God, the word of God is a sure word. Amen? Should not be messed with, should not be added to or subtracted from. Amen? Matthew 7 and verse 21 reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. 
but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who practice lawlessness. Amen? Therefore, whoever hears these said of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was, when Jesus had ended this saying, the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribe. And turn over with me to Luke chapter 6. Read it from verse 46. Luke 6, read it from verse 46. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you who he is like. Once again, he is like a man building a house. Hear what he did. Who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it. For it was founded on the rock. But he who, but he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth with a foundation against which the stream beat when he let me and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Amen. In these two scriptures, it is talking about having a foundation. Amen. As I said, a foundation is a structure that you build something upon. And in our Christian walk, the foundation that we need to build on is the foundation of the word of God, the truth of God. Amen? A foundation that is true is one that is followed. Like when God speaks, we say, yes, Lord, and we follow through. Amen? Now, when we first came to Christ, that's when the first works was laid. Amen? <coughs> when God touches one of us, I don't care who we were, where we were at, something supernatural happens. Amen? God does a work in us. We, just like that, Change start to take place. We came to God by faith. We, we heard his voice because he called. None can come to God unless he draws them. Amen? Many of us for years have been resisting before we got saved. Such was the case with me. But when I did give in to his voice and say yes, then he came and he made a change. You know, I, just this, just yesterday, I think, I was shaving my, my, my Natal and Naomi. We need to understand the fundamentals of Christianity. Amen? God, in the beginning, created the heavens and the earth. He made man and he placed him in the garden. Amen? He gave them dominion over everything. Amen? Everything was subjected to the man and the woman in the garden. That was their domain. They lost it through deception. 
when Satan deceived them and they fell. Amen? And we were separated from God. And sin just continued to multiply and multiply until God had to brought in the flood and he started over again. But once again, sin keep on going. And God then made a promise to a man called Abraham. Say, you are my friend because you had faith in me. I will make of you a great nation. Those who bless you, I will bless and those who curse you, I will curse. He made a promise. And then down through the ages, we see this promise coming through. But before this promise came, we saw the, the seed of Abraham, the children of Abraham going into Egypt. Amen? And we've seen God delivering them miraculously to signs and wonders. Even signs and wonders we don't even see in this, this side of, of glory, this side of the cross. And he brought them into the promised land with much difficulty. It was a short journey, but he had to send them on the wilderness for 40 years because of their unbelief. <laughs> but he brought them into the promised land. But just before then, he gave them covenants. He gave them promises. He said, you do this and I will do that. Amen? And when they got into the promised land, he warned them that, be careful after you prosper, that you don't forget me. But the exact same thing happened. Not only did they prosper, which he caused them to fall, but God told them to eliminate, il wipe out all the enemies. Because if you don't, they will influence you and cause you to worship their gods. And down to the years, they refused to give themselves 100% to God. And God realized that, you know what? It's not in them. They can't do it. Amen. Because you see, the law was a letter, a written code, whereby you had to read and follow. Amen. Thou shalt not. And you had to do it. God said, no. I'm going to do a new work. I'm going to have a new covenant. A covenant of grace. That's right. That's right. And this is where a lot of us are missing the mark. Grace. There are two things that are involved in bringing us to the Lord. The first is his mercy. When you have a child, and that child does something that is wrong, and you're about to inflict the rot that is deserving, whether it be a spanking or whatever, and that child pleads for mercy, you overlook that. You say, okay, you know what? I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna, not gonna punish you like you deserve. I'm gonna give you a chance. That's what God did with us. Amen? Through the cross of Jesus Christ. He paid for our sins through the, 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 the cross that He could show His mercy to us. So when we come to Him, deserving of death, He could say, you know what? I should cast you into eternal damnation, into hell. But because you have come to me in humility and you have accepted the finished work of my son Jesus Christ, I will have mercy on you. So that's where you see, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. It's a, it's, it's a love of entrance into his kingdom. God does not love... I'm going to say something to you. And I'll give you the scriptural reference later. I have to look it up. There's a psalm that says God hates the workers of iniquity. He said God pours out his wrath and all unrighteousness. I know we like to say God loves the world. God loves everybody. But understand, the love of God is a door or a window of opportunity yeah. for you to escape the wrath of God and come into His grace. Yeah. If you do not receive yeah. this love, this opportunity, you remain under the judgment or the hatred of God. That sounds strange. Yeah. God don't love the sinner man. Sorry to tell you that. God do not love the sinner man. He hates the workers of iniquity. But he have made a way to take you out of that state to come into a life of righteousness. Amen? So we got to understand that's the mercy that he bestowed upon us, giving us that window of es to escape and to come into his presence. Amen? Once we have received that, then mercy is changed to grace. Amen? Grace and mercy is two different things. Mercy is overlooking yes. the judgment that we deserve. Yes. Grace now is the enablement, yes. the power that we can live the life that God wants us to live. Yes. 
Amen. That's the grace of God. Where everything become God doing the work. Not us. I was sharing with my little ones. I said, Naomi, imagine. You're writing a test. And God is holding your hand. And he said, circle A. You do it. You take your hand and you circle B. Circle C. And you, you circle all the right answers for you. And then we look, you got a hundred percent. Praise the Lord, am I not good? No. It's God who did it for God. If you want to say he, he cheated for you, he cheated for you. But that's what he have done for us in bringing us to, bringing salvation to us. It is no longer a, a code of laws that we have to follow. God said, no, that did not work. I will first, I will wash them. I'll make them clean. I will take away the rebellious heart. And I will give them a heart of flesh. You see, now it's God who wills and purposes to do his good pleasure in us. All he asks is for us to believe and to yield to him. Amen. And then God works it out in us. Everything that God called us to do. It's not by our power. Yeah. You think when Jesus said to Peter, come, come, come on the water, yeah. that Peter somehow supernaturally acquired the ability to walk on water? Oh. And this was not no, this was not in Canada, okay? Because I walked on water too. Yeah. I went out to, to Quebec and I walked on water. And when I realized I was walking on water, I ran and I went back on the solid land because it was a lake and it was frozen. Yeah. But we're not talking about that kind of water. Yeah. We're talking about fluid water, liquid water. Jesus called Peter. Not only was it liquid water, but it was also stormy. And you think Peter somehow acquired the ability to defy nature and to walk on water? No. His faith was in God. And he did the impossible. Amen? And that is what our walk is about. Doing the impossible. God will accept nothing less. Than the impossible. Be ye holy. For I am holy. None of us. Could become holy in ourselves. Only to an act of God. Amen. So. Just to understand. The grace. That we come into. Is God doing the work through us. It's easy. Now we just take my yoke upon you and my burden, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because guess what? It's he who is doing this thing in you. And the struggles and the trials we go through cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. So it may seem difficult, but we got to make sure that our foundation is based on the rock. And Jesus is that rock. We got to obey his word. God don't play with his word. When God says something, he means it. You remember the Malachites? When Israel was coming out of Egypt, going into the promised land, Amalek came out and they attacked the back where you had the old, the weary, the children, and they attacked them. And God decreed, God said, you know what? I'm going to destroy Amalek. He said, when you have come into the promised land, I'm going to send you back to destroy the Amalekites. God tried to fulfill his word in the time of Saul. God sent Saul to go out and to destroy the Amalekites. And when Saul went, Saul did his own thing. God, Saul speared the king and took all the fatted cattle and everything that he thought would be good. To sacrifice to God. And God made a statement to Saul. He said, do I take pleasure in sacrifices? He said, to obey is better than sacrifice. Amen? So, we got to be careful to fulfill the word that comes out of God's mouth and not to add to it. Amen? Because God is a serious God. Back home, in saying it, we say, Serious like death, right? A dead man is dead serious. And after a while, they start to smile, right? You know, you know, after a while, the dead people start to smile, right? You know that? After they have decay and all the flesh, without the skin down, there's a skin in the teeth. 
But that's not, I'm not asking to not laugh, right? But anyhow, God is a serious guy. He doesn't play. He wants us not to add to the word, not to take from the word. So we got to make sure that our foundation is based on the word of God. Amen? Look at it. God saved us when we didn't deserve to be saved. Amen? Is that so? Yes. Which of you was so good that God said, you know what? I got to have that one. She or he is a jewel. No, when God look at us, he sees sin, filthiness. Yes. But God in his mercy, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he applies that blood with no longer covered. You see the Old Testament? It covered until the time of Christ would, would appear. But what God does now, he totally removes it, cleanses it. It's gone. So that the Holy Ghost could come and indwell us. That our hearts no longer will be hard of flesh. Because you see, our, the problem with us is our hearts. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In us, fornication, uh, greed, all these, all the sin, it comes from the heart. That's why Jesus said, it was written, that whoever commits adultery is guilty. But he said, if you just look at a woman to lust after in your heart, you have committed the sin. You see, God don't need to see the action being carried out. He looks at the heart. That's why men could fool man. We could put on a front. But God don't look at the, the, the appearance. He looks at the heart. That's why when Samuel went to, to Jesse, and he said, certainly going to be the oldest son. And he went down to the line. And he came to little David, shepherd boy David. He said to Jesse, you see, you guys look at the outside. To Sam, he said to Samuel, you guys looking at the outside, but I look at the heart. Amen? That's what God looks at. That way God came and he changed our hearts. So no, no longer are we following a letter of code. Now the Holy Spirit within us leads and directs and enables us. Yeah. Everything that God wants us to do, yeah. we can do it. Yeah. But we got to believe. Yeah. According to our faith, so be it unto us. Amen? I just want to read, I have many scriptures to go to, but I, I'm going to, I just want to read one very popular scripture we, 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 we like to read. Ephesians, Ephesians 2. We all love to read this scripture. I'm going to read from verse 1 through to 10, so you get the full picture. Amen? Okay. Ephesians 2, read it from verse 1. Listen to this. And you, including me and all of us here, he made what? Alive, right? Who were dead in trespasses and sin. Amen? In which you once walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the ear. That is the devil. Amen? The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Amen? That's where we were. Amen? Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath. Just as the others. Amen? That's who we were. Is that the word of God? But God, who is rich in what? Mercy. Because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. By an act of God, you have been saved apart from anything you had to do with it. Amen? And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace to his, in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by an act of God, by God and God by himself, by grace you have been saved. Amen. Through faith, through your believing in God. You believed in his word and he did the work. And that not of yourself. No credit to us. Amen. Amen. 
It is a gift. It's not a price. It's a gift. Not something that you work for. Something that is given to you. Amen? Not of things you did. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast. Because if I had something to do with it, I could take some credit. But we can't take no credit. And here I said, for we are his workmanship. You understand that too? When an artist draws a picture, right? You see that picture, that image or whatever, or made a structure. You say, that is the work of that artist, okay? You can say, wow, that picture great. That picture did nothing. It's the result of somebody else doing something. Amen? So we are his workmanship. That means we are the result of he doing something, not us. So we can't take credit for who we are. Amen? We are his workmanship. Created in Christ for good works. Not only did he make us, but he had a purpose for us. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, the same thing that God, the same requirement that God had for Israel. It has not changed. To serve the Lord. To do His command. To obey Him. That was there beforehand. We have to walk in those good works. But you see, it is God who is working in us to perform His good pleasure. I want us to see it because many of us, we are struggling. We are trying to please God in our own strength. We got to go back to the foundation. Make sure our foundation is sure. It got to be based faith on the finished work of Jesus Christ. We cannot add to the work. It is done. It is finished. We just have to walk in obedience. Whatever God says, we just obey. And it's easier said than done. Because this flesh of ours, it doesn't like to light up Dharma and let the Spirit just walk all over it. It will rise up its face as much as it can. But you hear what he said? We were once like that. We were driven by the same passions that the, the, the world out there is. So, that should cause us to be sympathetic to them. Because we were once like them. Amen? And we got to be careful that pride does not rise in us. That we start to think that we are somebody now. God is calling us. We, we need, I need, I need the manifestation of the sonship of God in our life, the glory of God. I need to see the power of God in this church, in this community, because the hearts of men and women are so hard that nothing other than a move of the Holy Spirit of God, God had to take that heart of stone and change it to a heart of flesh. Because people today are so hardened. There is no light. We as the light bearers, we are ashamed of our torches. We are hiding them. We are, we are causing our houses to be burnt down, you know. Because we are taking our torches and putting them under our beds. And therefore it's burning on our houses, right? We're supposed to have the, the torch out there so that it could be seen. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We need to make sure that the foundation is sure. And that we continue to walk by the grace of God. Not of works that we have done. We got to cry out to God. And I'm going to tell you something, okay? It's not always easy. Sometimes we have to labor in prayer. My wife was sharing with me about um, Jacob. When the angel, when he was in battle with a stone for his pillow. You see a lot of us? If we had a stone for a pillow, there is no way we would have seen God. There is no comfort in using a stone for a pillow. If we don't have these latest mattresses that make us one of us. Stay in Lala land forever. We can't sleep in peace. But here was Jacob with a rock for his pillow. And yet was seeking God. And when God came to him, when the angel came to him, he grabbed hold, lay hold of that angel and said, I want a blessing. And the angel wrestled with him. And the sun was just about to come over the horizon. And the angel said, sun is not coming up with you wrestling with me. And Jacob said, no, unless you bless me, I ain't letting you go. And he changed his name from Israel, from Jacob to Israel. Because you know what Jacob meant, right? Supplanter, smarty pants, a deceiver. 
جينا على الاسد هو عايز يسوس اوكي سو جاكوب ويسل ويز جاد فور هيز بليسنج جيسوس سيد اباوت ذا انجلس جادج اند ذا ويدو هو هو وانت جاستس اند ذا جادجمنت ات جيفر ذا تايم اوف ذا بت هو فور سيستم ذا جادج سيد يو نو وات ذس وومن غانا ويير مي اوت اي شود جيفر جاستس That's what Jesus wants us to do. When you come to God, don't just come and say, it's not like a wishing well, you're trying to quarter. I'm bidding, I'm blessed. No. Sometimes you have to wrestle. Yeah. Because sometimes there are demonic forces yeah. that are, is hindering the blessing yeah. from coming through. Yeah. You don't believe it? Go and read the book of Daniel. Mm-hmm. 21 days yeah. it took Gabriel to get through. And so fierce was the battle that the warrior Michael the archangel had to come and assist Gabriel. So sometimes we have to wrestle. Yeah. Sometimes you want to give your life to Christ. You want to give, but something just keep on holding you back. Yeah. We're talking about eternity. Yeah. Do not let discouragement be your downfall. Wrestle. Lay hold of the altar as the Lord. I'm not going to let go yeah. until you touch me. Yeah. And when He touches you, you're going to know something happened. Yeah. You're going to feel a release. And it is a glory, hallelujah. I am free. So I said to you, come to Christ and wrestle until he answers your prayer. Don't let go. Give it all. Lay it all down. Because if we don't, the alternative is unthinkable. Where the worm does not die. And the fire is not quenched. Where a drop, one drop of water will appear as we leave. Can you imagine that? If you're thirsty, you would think about, give me a cup of water. But it was so great that the rich man said, even a drop. This is so great. Even a drop will be, so, will help, you know, I, 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 even a drop, you, could take. you can't give me abundance, give me a little drop because I'm so tormented. God, love is an opportunity to escape his wrath. We are so close. For you who are saved, hang in there. Regardless to what you're going through. The Bible says some of you are going to go through the fire. Some of you are going to literally kill. But it's in your patience, possess it, your soul. If you hold on to the end, it all will be worth it. Amen. When you come on this tribulation and trial, don't let it discourage you. Select Paul, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. You know what the love of God is? The love of God, get this in context, okay? The love of God is obedience. So nothing that you go through will prevent you from obeying God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. To love God is not to say that you love God, but it's to keep his commandment. So to abide in the love of God, is to abide in his obedience. So when death come your way, when tribulation and trial, you keep on obeying God. You keep on walking in the love of God. Nothing should cause you to disobey God. Amen. And when you stand before him, what will he say? In closing. What will he say? The path for me or enter into my rest. It's going to be a sad day. I'm going to read the scripture and I'm going to close here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. It's a very common scripture. Read it from verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man. This man is representing God, okay? Traveling to a far country who called his own servants, called his saints, his followers, called men and women, amen? And deliver unto them his good. Gave them his gifts, his Holy Spirit. Amen? And, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Every man according to his several ability. Amen? God never gives us more than we can handle. Amen? And straight away he took off and he took his journey. Then when, then he who had received the five talents, went and traded with, traded with the same and made them out of five talents. Amen? He used what God gave him. 
his gifts, his talents. He used them. Amen? And likewise, he who had received the two also gained two others. But he who received the one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckon, to reckon with them. I have the King James Version. Forgive me for that, okay? And so, that he had received the five talent, came and brought out of five talent and said, Lord, you have delivered to me five talent. Behold, I have gained beside the five, five more. Amen? And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And he also who received the two talent came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talent. Behold, I have gained two beside them. The Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful in over a few things. I'll make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know that you are a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not stray. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast what which is thine. And the Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, you know, you knowest that I weep where I did not sow and gather where I did not stray. Thou artest therefore to have put my money to the exchange, exchanges and that at my coming I would have received my own with interest. Take that talent from him and give unto him who has a ten talent. For unto everyone who hath shall be given unto him who have and he shall have abundance. But to him who has not shall that be taken away from him. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When God saved us, he didn't save us for ourselves. As I said, everything in this life is about God. We are here to please him. If there's a blessing in our life, thank God, that's gravy. But the, our main reason for being here is to give glory to God. And how do you give glory to God? By obeying his commandments. By allowing his Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth. To guide us and we surrender to him. Amen? Amen. Our foundation has to be on the solid rock. On the obedience of the word of God. Amen? Amen. The world out there is dying. It is sad. But they cannot be saved on their own. Somebody has to go and take the good news to them. Yeah. We have to go and do it. And do not worry about the end result. Amen? One sows, one waters, but God gives increase. God might have to say to you like what he said to Ezekiel. They're going to have hard heads. But do not fear them. Do not be afraid of their faces. Speak the word and the word will accomplish its purpose yeah. the hardest of hearts can be changed not because of the eloquence of our speech but by the power of the holy ghost amen so for you who are saved look at your life examine yourself make sure that you are in the faith the things the little sin that are beset you the little things that are not necessary, throw them away. You know, the little pleasures that adds nothing. You see, I'm trying right now. Whatever, when I do, when I'm not doing anything, whatever spirit that I have, I try to do things that call me to focus on God. So now I'm not saying anyone have to do this. So for me now, when I, when I'm home and I'm too tired to do anything, because believe me, you can't be praying all the time, okay? Something you're just too tired, amen? And some of the way we, when we want to relax, we go and we go in from the tube and we, we watch a show. Right? For me, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. For me now, I want to be constantly to be encouraged. So what I do, I love the internet. Okay. Sorry for that. I like the internet. Okay. I go and I look for all my artists by names, look for all the videos and I download them. And when I want to tell my work, I just put them on. I put on Jabez, I put on J Prince, I put on um, Judith Gale, I put on all these guys. I, I, I just, I minister to. So when I'm relaxing, 
I'm not feeding myself stuff that is going to fight against my spirit. Because you know what I want to do? I want to be built up. I want to be strong. I want that when God says, who will go? And when I put up my hand, he said, take it down. You can't go. I want to say, yes, come. You can go. Because your vessel that has been prepped for my work. Amen? So let us redeem the time for the days are evil. Let us put ourselves in a position that when God needs to send somebody out, or when God needs somebody to cross somebody's path, God could say, cross this brother or this sister path. They will give you the words of life. Just like Ananias, who went to Paul and said, there's one Saul praying, and he heard that one Ananias is going to come and give him the word of life. Just like after Paul was, I mean, Peter went to Cornelius, he said, go, tell Cornelius to go. There's one Paul, one Peter, it's by, by the base, by the seashore, by a tunnel, and he gonna give you the word of eternal life. We need to be vessels that God could send somebody to, so that we could receive the words of eternal life. Let us put ourselves in that position. How would it be sad if they come and knock on the door? I mean, they knock on the door, and they say, Lord, send me to speak with you. You have a word for me. And you're in there watching a blue movie, or uh, some, you're doing something that's out of character. It will not work. Amen? So let us be ready. Amen, Father. Or we think not, the Lord can come, or He can send somebody to us. Amen? Let's make sure that our foundation is sure. Amen? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, God. For Lord, for the foundation that cannot be moved. The storms of life can come. It doesn't matter what come our way. We can stand. Stand being established in the word of truth. Cannot be moved. Father, I pray for your saints, oh God. That we'll continue to plug in, to hold on. Father, for you, your words are he who continues to ask. He who continues to seek. He who continues to knock. He who continues to have faith. It is an ongoing thing. It's not just a one-time shot. He who endures to the end, the same shall make it in. Amen? So Father, I'm praying that your people will become active, Lord, in seeking your face, in doing your work, in, in, in inquiring, what will you have me to do, O oh Lord? And they will in obedience say, send me. Even at first, if they say, I will not go, let there be a repentance in them, and they will change their mind and go. Father, use us, O oh God, to bring your light to this world who are in the midst of a dark time, O oh God, that we may show them the light of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that they may be saved, O oh God. Father, I thank you, Lord. And for those who are not saved, Lord, I pray that you will help them to come to the realization that everything they're seeking, everything they're, they're going after, is, it, it's, it's, it's not worth it. They, they just should give, give up their lives and just give it over to you and let you do what you want with it. For Father, then they will have great joy and great peace. Father, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody that would like to give their life to Christ, I will, I'm going to tell you how it's going to work, okay? When you come to Christ, God, let me say, first of all, God don't need you. God is complete. Okay? Okay? God is complete in himself. God, if you don't come to God, God is not going to be missing something. If God needs somebody and nobody is there, God could make a person out of the rock. God don't need you. You need God. Amen? And what you have is no good for you. What you have is destroying you. You need to give it all to the Lord. He will take your rags and he will give you a robe of white, a robe, a glorious robe. Amen? You need to realize that everything you have tried has failed. And if you keep on trying, it's going to continue to fail. Yeah. So don't even wait until everything. The song says, you've tried everything, you've failed. So you don't wait to try everything. I'm telling you, it's going to fail. Only Jesus Christ is going to succeed. Amen? Amen? So I'm asking you to come and lay it at the altar. Seek God's face until he breaks through and he gives you that in your life. And he changes you. Today is the day of salvation. Because if you were to die today, there is no excuse. Every sin will be punished. The only sins that will not be punished are those that the blood of Jesus Christ have washed away when you come to him in obedience and in repentance. So God is calling God. The door, the love of God is open. But just like Noah and the ark, 
There's going to come a time when not even Noah is going to close the door. God is going to close that door. The bride, the bride room is going to close the door. You can come and you can knock as much as you want. I never knew you. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. Give it all to God. I guarantee you, your returns will not be disappointed. Amen? So I bid you, give your life to Christ. Today is the day of salvation. If the Lord is speaking to you, you need to come to this altar and seek his face and allow him to take it all and to give you what he has in store for you. You will never be disappointed in the Lord. Amen? Amen. For those who are saved, we need to daily examine ourselves to make sure that we are still in the faith. Make sure that we are walking in obedience to God. Remove all the sin that is besetting us. All the practices that is come, getting between us and God. All the things that are causing us to become unfruitful because there is a danger. If you stop bearing fruits, He's going to cut you off and cash you out and burn you. That is the word of God, not my word. You see the guy with the one talent? He refused to be a fool. He was taken away. Amen? So let us walk the walk. Let us fight the good fight of faith. So that at the end of all, I did because I like Paul, I have kept the faith. I have finished the course. And there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Amen? Because the other thing is, depart from me, I never knew you. But Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We heal the sick. We did this and that. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Amen? So let us go forth in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in the name of the Lord. And let us be victorious. Amen? Trusting in him. It is God who wills and do his good pleasure in you. It's not about you. It's about him. Amen?